Good morning, everyone. I invite you to uh, find a seat so we can all pray in together, get spiritually aligned together and all that good stuff. Ah, so I invite you to get into whatever your comfortable prayer position is. I like to put both feet on the ground to get myself grounded, close my eyes, focus in on my breath. Ah, breathing in and as we breathe out, just allowing your shoulders to drop, relaxations around your neck. Ah, thank you, God. Thank you for this day exactly like it is. I know that some people define this day as too cold for what it should be now or too wet for what it should have been then. It is perfect, just like it is. And I say thank you for all the good stuff that's coming from the weather and that's coming from this place and coming from these people. I look forward to all the magnificence that today offers. And I say yes to it. I say yes to it. I say yes to it. And so it is. And amen. And Maria is going to lead us in a song. I think Chris is going to pull it up on the thing for you. Let me pull it up here. So I'm sort of looking forward. I'm going to invite everyone to stand up and join me in this fun little ditty to get us started today. And it comes in real quick, so be ready. A gathering in song. beautiful good morning good morning and welcome home I'm gonna ask you all to repeat after me and if you're watching us virtually please type this in the comment section everyone look around at your neighbors and repeat after me good morning, good morning. I love you this morning, I love you this morning. awesome thank you and I sure do appreciate you being here. To our virtual church family, please know we are saying that to you as well. Help us grow this loving community by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to our pages. And now, if you'll join me in reading our affirmations for May. 
I am powerful, I am wise, I use my power to activate wise decisions in my life. I breathe in peace and I breathe out peace because I am the peace I seek. I love that I am the peace I seek. So I am your prayer chaplain today. And I just want to invite you, no matter what you may be growing through, that uh, if, if you would like a prayer chaplain to pray with you, I'm, I'm here today as is Anita and Kathy. And we are more than happy to pray with you. So it's just seek one of us out after service. To be included on our prayer list, you can fill out a form which is on the back table and put it in the prayer box, which is here, before or after the service. Or you can click on the prayer request button on our website. We know that prayer works. So let us take in a deep breath now and close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. Dear, dear spirit, we ask your blessing on all the intentions placed in our prayer box today and on the intentions we hold in our hearts for ourselves and for others. We would like to offer a special prayer for Richard Hyatt and family. Mary Turner, Kevin, Alyssa, and Kira, and Tommy. Kathleen Strickland, Chip Roth, Donis Kravik, Herbert Bird, Barbara Slatt, and all those whom you are holding in your heart today. We ask that you, Holy Spirit, help us see them in their wholeness as you see them in their wholeness. And as together we affirm then that these loved ones are whole, perfect, and complete. We stand with them, knowing that as our source, you are everywhere present, and you are available to each and every one of us in this moment, no matter the challenges. We cast out fear and doubt of every kind. We simply just cast it out and hold fast to the knowing that we have everything we need to meet any situation that shows up in our lives. We know ourselves to be joy-filled beings. We recognize that no matter what the appearance on the outside, joy is our birthright. It is in us. And we can call it forth as divine guidance and inspiration. We rest in this knowing and simply say thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. And as we release our loved ones, release them confidently to spirit, knowing that it is already all right. And taking a moment to feel the comfort and the joy of knowing that those that we care about are already all right.
and then taking a moment to visit the phrase, the affirmation that I am whole, perfect, and complete. I invite you in this moment to just pay attention to how you feel when you say, I am whole. Is that something that you can say and connect to your spirit? Or is your human experience offering up examples saying, no, no, you're not. You are whole because you are one with God. You are whole because you always have been and you always will be. You are whole because you are part of all creation. And you are whole because you are a child of God and the heir to all good things that this world has to offer. Not only is everything already all right for our loved ones, it is already all right for us. I invite you to say to yourself, it is already all right for me. Thank you, God. Thank you for life just like it is because I get to keep using it and growing with it. I offer love and I accept love. And for that I say thank you. And so it is. All right, we're going to start out announcements by having Gala come up and tell you about something fun and exciting that's going to happen next Sunday. And then uh, Brenda will come tell you about the rest of it. Okay. You got to okay. use that so that he'll yell. Get a here. mic. Wow. Okay. So, uh, Reverend Wally mm -hmm. and Miranda and I met this week as part of the activities committee or activities team. And if any of you guys would like to join the activities team, please see me after the service. We'd love to have you. And so uh, we talked about how important it is for a community or a family, our family, to come together to play together. It gives us the chance to bond, to get to know each other better, to meet new people, and also just to have some fun. So um, the first activity that we're going to have is in the park. It's going to picnic in the park right after church. And we're going to have some games to play. Uh, we're going to make it easy, so bring your own lunch and bring your own chair. And we'll have some Frisbees and some bean, ba bean bag toss games. And um, if you guys have like uh, horseshoes or something like that, let me know, we'd love to have that too. And is there anything else? Oh yes, it's gonna be in the Arboretum Lindley Park. Do you know where Summer Solstice is? Okay, it's gonna be in that park. You can also uh, put in your GPS and find it. It's about five minutes from here. We're gonna meet under the bridge. Just have some fun together. And one of the things I want to encourage you to do is to uh, meet new people. You know, don't just sit with your group of friends, but to ask new people to sit with you and really get to know one another. And one more thing, if you have an activity that you'd like to do with our family, let me know and we'll find a way to put that together. Brenda. Thank you, Gail. All righty. If you are a first time visitor or haven't been with us here in a long time, please raise your hand. We have a couple, yes. And she looks like she already has her gift, 
visitor gift. Thank you so much. We'd love for you to fill out that visitor connection card in the bag and leave that with one of the ushers so that we can maintain contact with you. All right, we have lots of things coming up this week. Um, Purposefully Living Group meets on Wednesday, May 11th from 6.30, and that is Zoom only, and there are sign-up sheets in the back for all of the groups. There's a music team meeting on Saturday, May 14th, 11 a.m. in person. I suspect that is here, right? Yep, upstairs. Upstairs, all right. There are sign-up sheets, as I said, for all the Wednesday night activities at the door, and please take advantage of these wonderful offerings. And now we have another announcement from Wally. Thank you. It's not so much an announcement. We're going to do a little Mother's Day activity. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I I didn't say that before. Um, So uh, I'm going to actually, as we start this, Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do Sandy's introduction myself so that when we finish this part, we'll go straight into the, let the music connect to the activity. Um, so I'm going to read to you, uh, what's here. It says Sandy began playing piano at the Hamilton Baptist church at age 11. Like so many do, he drifted away from church in his twenties. I did that. Uh, while attending UNC, studying broadcasting. I did that too, by the way. Um, and subsequently at uh, NC State, I did not do that. Um, studying computer programming, I definitely did not do that. Um, but he did, and I'm grateful that he did. Um, around 2000, he uh, was drawn to Unity Church of the Triangle, um, where he not only reconnected with God, but also with his musical gifts and began writing new thought uh, or posse music. Um, May of last year, uh, he released his second CD called 95 Seconds of Normal, and that's available now on all the electronic things. So I highly encourage you to, you know, buy a song, buy the CD. It, it's a way of supporting our own musical guests. So uh, please consider doing that now. <sighs> Now you know about the person that's going to play for you after we do this. So it's Mother's Day. And um, at Up Church in L.A., they had this thing they did every Mother's Day and Father's Day that I just started not going to church on those days. I hated it so much. It was the, let's find out who's the oldest mother. Let's find out who's the youngest mother. I Some of you may love that. I do not. Um, so, and... Um, but what I do want to do is, uh, I don't know if, it, I don't even remember which year it was, but probably 2007, eight, somewhere in there, uh, Oprah Winfrey did this thing called a Legends Ball, where she really wanted to um, honor the uh, black women who had came before her, who opened the doors. And so they did this great ceremony. It was a whole weekend thing. And one of the things she did was she had a poem commissioned called We Speak Your Names. And so she did this poem, and then all the women that she was honoring as legends, they had worked their name into the poem. And um, we're not going to read that poem. But in honor of that, we're doing what, uh, I think we have a card that says, uh, We Speak Their Names. And I think that it's so powerful just to say the names out loud. Now, many of us in this room got cool mothers that we loved and we had fun with, and uh, some of us might have not. You know, so I recognize that. So what I want to invite everyone to do is we're going to pass the mic around and I invite you just to say the first name of either your mother or the mother figure that you want to honor. And we're just going to speak their names. And then at the end of that, um, Sandy is going to bless us with some music. Okay. Are you ready? It's going to get messy because we're going to pass this microphone around the entire room. All right. I'm going to start with us, and then I'll take it out there. So I will start by saying Judy. Patricia. Debbie. Carol. Patricia. Helen. Jean. Ruth. Onita. Ellen. Joni. Jack. Kelly. Clara. Judy. Phyllis and Virginia. Charlotte. 
Janice. Elizabeth. Janet. Adele. Betty. Trudy. Thank you. That was beautiful. All right. So today I thought we would talk about Myrtle Fillmore. And, and to be clear, this is not a dissertation, and there will be lots of information that I will not speak about today about her. You know, this, I'm not writing a book. We're going to talk about, oh, we better start that phone, though, or that timer, so we can all go to lunch sooner or later. Lunch is important. Um, I learned that from my mother. No. <laughs> um, so, but wh what I find, there's so, so many cool things just within the notes that, that I found on her. And, and I think that the, the key thing is that she's not important just because of, of who she was in as being a co-founder of Unity. Um, what she wrote and, and how she came about this information 
is speaks to every one of us today the same as it spoke to her and the people back in 1886, I think, when she was first introduced to this information. And so here's uh, the first thing that I, I want to introduce you to, that, or, or read, if you have already know it, remind, uh, that she wrote is, I do not believe in evil. I believe in good. I do not believe in sin. I believe in truth. I do not believe in want. I believe in abundance. I do not believe in death. I believe in life. I do not believe in ignorance. I believe in intelligence. There are no discords in my being. Being is peace. My faith, understanding, and love are becoming one. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put us under. Us under, by the way, is a word. Do y'all all know that too? Like I, I, yeah, I'm like, I was like, put us under, under what? Um, but you know, it just means divide. Let no man divide us up. Um, look, I know some of y'all already knew that, but I'm not the only one that had to Google it. So uh, for the, for those of you like me, it means divide. Don't let that happen. Um, so, um, Myrtle was, uh, in childhood diagnosed with tuberculosis and that caused her many problems and she was looking for healing and she had tried many different things and they had tried medicines and they'd done all this. And in, in the midst of all that, she and Charles uh, go to some classes being taught by a man named uh, E.B. Weeks. And it was in there that um, he said, or that she got from that, uh, the saying that really changed her life and ultimately opened the door for all of us to change our lives because it was the beginning of what we now know as unity, which is I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. So she had accepted that she had this thing that she owned because that's what people told her. And, and all these years later, we don't really talk about sickness all that differently. I have a condition known as diabetes in my body that I treat. But if I say I have diabetes, I'm claiming ownership of something I don't want to own. Now, I won't say that I don't slip up and say it that way sometimes because that's the, like, that's the terminology that we've learned to speak about it. But it's important and the lessons that we learn in unity is not to own whatever it is you don't want to own. If you look at your bank account and it's at one penny and you're wanting to buy something for a hundred dollars, what you may not be in the position to purchase it then. But what you don't do is claim the ownership of saying, I can't afford it. You, you know, you then word it, uh, not today. Uh, we're going to look at that a little bit longer. We're going to work on whatever the other thing is, but you don't claim ownership of something you don't wish to own and you all have the power of deciding what it is you want to own so don't let somebody else say well why did you say it like why do you say well i have a condition that, uh, because that's the way i said it if you don't like it don't listen but definitely don't tell me not to say something when I'm working on my mind because that's where the healing will begin. And, and you don't even have to guess and go outside of science for that because there are those placebo pills we all know about that end up working for some people along the way, right? Because the mind is a powerful thing. And that is what Myrtle discovered when she went to this first class. Now, before I get into some of the other of the powerful stuff she did, um, I came across, there was a gentleman named da -da -tum, Tom Witherspoon who had done some research. Now, E.B. Weeks was in Kansas City doing this as part of, he worked for um, a place called the Illinois Metaphysical College, and that was founded by Emma uh, ha uh, Curtis Hopkins. And um, so... When Tom went through the meeting minutes that he found of the Illinois Metaphysical College, he found an indication that Emma didn't like E.B. all that much. That found E.B. kind of annoying. And so sent him out of town as often as possible to get him away from her. 
And one of those trips was to Kansas City, where he met Myrtle and Charles Fillmore. And we got the birth of all the good things that happened because a woman didn't want to be annoyed by a man. On <laughs> so I love, I love, and it just goes, to, it's funny, but it also goes to show that there's good in everything. Like that moment, that man was in that town under the preface of, Let's have him in that town so he's not in this one. And yet, it still birthed some really good stuff that I know transformed my life and the information that then came from all that. Because Myrtle has the title of co-founder. But the truth is, there wouldn't be unity at all if it wasn't for Myrtle Fillmore. Because it was her getting the information, putting it to use, then getting to an, a, a place where she could call herself cured from tuberculosis. And then Charles, who had had physical challenges most of his life, too, said, oh, well, let me try that stuff out, too. And then he started working it, and then Charles did whatever he did. We ain't talking about him today. It's not Father's Day. Um, but we're actually not talking about him on Father's Day either. But um, uh, we were going to, but I changed my mind. Um, but... So it was the big Myrtle kicked this whole thing off, kicked it off out of curiosity, kicked it off out of a need of changing something in her life, and then kicked it off by taking some information and not just listening to it and like making it a book in the library of her mind. She actually then took it out and put it into action in a way that she's like, hey, this stuff works. And then she, could, she wasn't just talking about something she read. She talked about something she knew. And then she told other people, and then they tried it, and they were like, hey, this does work. And then it grew, and it grew, and then they had a magazine that they started, and then they started Silent Unity that still exists today where you can call and, and have somebody pray with you. Um, all of that started from a place of needing to fix something of needing to change something. So um, Myrtle wrote this next piece. She said, I have made what seems to be a discovery. I was fearfully sick. I had all the ills of mind and body that I could bear. Medicine and doctors ceased to give me relief. I was in despair when I found practical Christianity. I took it up and I was healed. I made what I called my discovery. I was thinking about life. Life is everywhere. Ah, intelligence as well as life is needed to make a body. Here is the key to my discovery. Life has to be guided by intelligence in making all forms. The same law works in my own body. Life is simply a form of energy and has to be guided and directed in our body by his intelligence. How do we communicate intelligence? By thinking and talking, of course. Then it flashed upon me that I might talk to the life in every part of my body and have it do just what I wanted. I began to teach my body and I got marvelous results. She literally sat and spoke to the very cells of her body. Right? She might talk to the, Della used to sometimes say she got to where it'd be a little bit harder. I mean, she's in her 80s, and so she got ready to get out of a chair, and somebody would be like, oh, can I help you? No. She's like, come on back. We can do that. Come on back. And then she'd talk herself right on up out of the chair. She would speak to the part of her body that was giving her a challenge of getting up. And that's, that is a direct lesson from what Myrtle did. Myrtle saw that if she needed the very cells in her body to change so that the condition changed, that's what she did. Now, I know I learned the story enough that I reached out to one of my other uh, minister friends who then she's like, I don't know about that. And then she reached out to about five other unity ministers and some had heard it and some hadn't. What I heard was that Myrtle at some point in those early days, she shut herself off in a room to meditate and to say her affirmations and to pray. And she put a picture of Jesus across from her as she did this meditation. Now, we all know that the pictures that they have of Jesus today, and certainly the pictures they had of Jesus in 1886, ain't what Jesus probably looked like. And yet, the power 
is in the intention. So it doesn't matter. The same thing is true, by the way. We used to sing this song. I think I've said this before. My choir had this song called Power in the Name of Jesus. And this was a 20, 25-person gospel choir. And we got up into the power. And the crowd was going crazy. And everybody was feeling the power. Power in the name of Jesus. Except here's, and there is, because I saw it happen. Except you know who never heard the word Jesus? Jesus. Because that's an English translation of what he was called. And yet we have great power in that word. So there's great power in the words you decide to give power to. Use that one if you want to. Use whichever other one you feel more comfortable with. It's about your intention. And then there's the power that's in that. So... um, I'm skipping over this one part because I want to read. So in like the 1890s at some point, Myrtle wrote a children's book called We Wisdom's Way. And then from there, it became a magazine called We Wisdom. That was a children's magazine that went around for a while. And I want to read you this segment of one of the stories, um, not the whole thing, but um, and this this little girl apparently is very Southern. Um, like the way she wrote it. So here's the story that she gave so that a child could start learning this information that most of us like had to go into adulthood and then relearn stuff, right? So um, Aunt Joy is going into great. Grace is a little girl and Aunt Joy is going in her room, right? Grace has had bad dreams and is afraid of the dark. The other night she cried and Aunt Joy came in and just took her right up in her arms without lighting the gas and asked, why are you afraid of the dark? Grace said, because there's boo-goos in it. Can't you see them? No, I just think them. And uh, so Aunt Joy said, do they hurt you? No, I was afraid they will, though. Are you afraid now? No, because you're here. But suppose something scary should really come in now. What would you do? Wouldn't do nothing, because, but just keep right here in your arms. Nothing could scare me or hurt me. And she said, and why not? Because I loves you so, and you loves me, and would never, never let anything hurt me when you's here. Grace, darling, where did you get that love that makes you so brave when my arms are about you. Get it? Why, it just is, isn't it? Then wasn't it here just the same before I came in? I didn't think about it before. But of course, I loves you the same in the other room. But some way it seems different, and I know right where you are when I can't see you. Would you love me any better if the light were on in here so that you could see me? No, I like it this way. But suppose I lay down and, and sit beside you without touching, without touching you and keep so still that you cannot even hear me breathe. How would you love me then? Try it, Aunt Joey. Let's see how it feels. So Aunt Joey sat there in the dark, all still, till Grace called out. Oh, Aunt Joey, I know it all now. At God's way, he keeps out of sight, but he's right here all the time. I never thought, uh, I've never thought of it that way before. Uh, Papa and Mama always say God's always everywhere, but I couldn't stand it before. Now... You're right here, and I can't see you or feel you or hear you, but you's here all the same, and I know it. And the boogoos can't come because I know it. Why do I know God uh, does that way? My sweet child, you are quick to catch my lesson of the dark. Now, if you will practice it by going to sleep here in God's arms without me, we will talk it all over tomorrow, and then you will understand it better. We have uh, waked up your sister uh, with our midnight lesson. Now shall I kiss you good night and leave you? Can you really trust God to stay and keep off the boogaboos? 
Uh, Grace decided to do so, and Aunt Joy went back to her room. I felt so strangely about her leaving God there and wondered what they'd think if Grace got scared again. Pretty soon, I heard Grace say, Dear God, when I said my prayers, I hope you'll excuse me for directing them to heaven because I didn't know then that you sure enough right here and I could just talk to you and love you same as Aunt Joey. I know, dear God, you never made boogoos to scare little children. Now I know you's here in the dark, all full of pretty and thanks and thank you, God, for feeling so soft and warm. And then Grace was fast asleep. I know that was a long story, but I loved that it was that the aunt walked her through the process of like, she's like, I feel safe because you're holding me. And, and it's like, because of the love. And it's like, would you, so I don't love you as much when I'm not touching you or not in the room. Oh no, of course you do. And then it's like, so that's true for all of us when things come up, when either uh, we get worried about something, when we, uh, you know, we had a tornado in Rockingham County, um, night before last and I had people calling me up and um and saying oh it's on the news they're blowing the you know and uh and so instead of uh, you know it's like you can get worried about it or you can trust that you're taken care of and then maybe not be as smart and walk outside and be like well what's going on out here you know but um but it did blow some stuff down and and took down a whole bunch of trees but it didn't hurt or kill anyone, thank God, right? But and there was a moment in there that people certainly could be awfully scared when they, when they were in our house and trees were coming down. And I drove around yesterday and saw like the whole root of the tree was up out of the ground and, you know. And so those things metaphysically happen to us all the time. Somebody will introduce the, this thing has happened, you know, or um, the light bill is due, you know, or did you hear what Sally said about you? You know, and, and then you, and then it starts twirling and you can give power to that twirl or you can like this little girl understand that you don't have to pray to a cloud somewhere of an old man sitting on a cloud in some other geographical location that you can stop and get quiet and know that I am one with God. God is right where I am. So nothing can happen to me. That's not going to happen to God. I'm good. I'm good. Now, that's not to say that we don't all come up with challenges. That's not to say that some of us don't have something to come up that you got to go into the hospital or you got to do whatever the thing is. But it is to say that God is still equally present regardless. And these lessons don't stop us from having challenges. They just give us more tools to stay in the moment, to know our truth, to be comfortable and confident of who and what we are in those times. And that's what Myrtle decided to teach little children in that. So there's this one last part that I want to read you that she, uh, in her, the book Healing Letters, um, basically there are two books that are ascribed as being written by Myrtle, but they were really uh, letters that got all put together in books. So the only book that I know of that she actually sat down to author was this children's book. Um, but then these other books got put together. And on being the mother of unity, she said this in answering someone's letter. But dear, I feel you are crowning me with an honor that belongs to the Holy Spirit, which is omnipresent and which expresses in the loving desires of the hearts of all those who are endeavoring to manifest the mother side of God. You call me the mother of unity. Well, now I know of nothing that would give me greater joy than to feel that God could work so perfectly through me as to bring forth a great ministry and a place of peace and good will of health such as this unity school is. But in reality, I feel that I am only the soul who caught the first vision of this ministry and who nurtured the vision until others came along to help in establishing in, in the establishment of it in the minds and hearts of our dear ones and to help in the molding in substance and outer forms of this school and its work. And she's right. She did kick something off that's helped us all. But 
Um, I don't know that she ever came to Greensboro. There are people in this room that kicked off unity in Greensboro and mothered it, gave birth to it. And so we say thank you for those of you who are here who have kept that going. And the same thing is true of whatever you've got going at home. There's some stuff there that you mothered and gave birth to. I live in a house that I bought that was built in 52 and it had two other families in it. But it didn't look like and feel like it does now to them because they had their emanation of it. And I gave birth to the feel of the home that I've created. And that's true for all of us. You all have that mothering power in you, regardless of whether you've given birth to children or not. You're giving birth to life all day, every day. So I invite you, as our theme of the year says, to do it on purpose and make the decisions of exactly what you want it to be. And then like Myrtle did, to sit down and speak to your body and speak to your mind and speak to the very cells in it and invite them to change where you feel the call to ask for change. You have that power. I love you, I bless you, and I behold the Christ in you. And thanks for being here today. So now is our time to give our love offerings and our tithes. Um, and uh, if you're watching us virtually, there's donate buttons for you to click. And uh, thank you in advance for helping us pay for all the technology that makes that happen. And um, if you all give electronically here, as I know many of us do, then I invite you to place your hands on your heart. If you have your gifts here for them to collect, I invite you to uh, pray on that as they collect. And let's say together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And so Charlotte's going to give a prayer on the gifts, and then Sandy will give us some music. Anita, would you like to just come up here? And Nana, when you have finished, you can come up and stand too. Thank you. So as you all know, the prosperity principle of circulation is at the core of our unity teachings. There is no limit to the good that the universe will deliver into our lives when we live as givers to life. So I invite you to hold up your hands now and infuse these love offerings with the energy of gratitude and love. As you see, hear, and feel yourself breathing through the following words as you say them silently to yourself along with me. I give because I have received life. I give because I am able to give. Because I want to give. Because it makes me feel good to give. I put a blessing upon every service I render, upon the ideas I share, the appreciation and gratitudes I express, the checks I write, the currency I dispense. We do all this so that others may feel the joy and happiness we find in giving, sharing, and communicating. We praise God that we may be a channel of service, of bounty, of well-being, of creative ideas. We give and receive in the spirit of oneness. And so it is. So it is. Amen.
was bad today It made me want to swear At home I find my favorite chair in pieces The rage is building I so want to explode That I'm fixed by Chewie's loving soulful stare The first time that we met those puppy kisses on my face They brought me joy beyond compare Who really cares about a chair? Women understand The trials of motherhood The aching back Nausea each morning The pain is building It comes at her in waves When a child appears She knows that all is good Wrapped by infant smiles A mother holds a tiny baby in the world, but there's fewer unconditional loves in the world. So when you find that, grab hold of it and just really enjoy it in a way that you can use it for memories later on in life too. So, um, all right. Thank you all for being here today. Let me make sure I uh, give you a reminders. We're doing the Purposefully Living Group on, on Wednesday. I've got a piece of another piece of something that Myrtle wrote that I want to discuss with that group. So I'll email it out if you just make sure to sign the sheet in the back so that I know to send it to you. Um, and then and next Saturday, um, our musicians in the church are all going to meet as we are preparing to, to look for a piano player. 
Uh, we want to, you know, kind of talk about our eclectic sounds and stuff. So uh, we'll be doing that from 11 to 1 upstairs. And then next Sunday, we're talking about Ruth, who has her own book in the Bible. And there are only two women that have those. So let's talk about it. And, uh, and then uh, Maria and Anita, as UIG singers, will be providing our music for that. And I think Nick's going to do the, um, uh, the call to worship song as well. So, um, And then, you know, I invite you all to, to read your emails, first of all. So, you know... Um, and communicate with us so that we can all do more together. The activities group, is, our team, is our largest group that people signed up for. But we only had three people show up for the meeting. And, uh, and our uh, community outreach group is the second highest group. And I sent three emails, put it in the e-blast, and announced it last week. And not one person ever, oh, no, that's true, one person, only one person ever even responded, so we canceled the meeting because no one responded. So uh, when you all are ready to do the outreach, I need to hear it, and we'll do the work. Um, and, uh, and just so you know, that's not smacking anybody's hands. It's just saying, hey, let's all get on the same page so that we can do all the great work we want to do, that I know that we want to do. So, all right, let's, uh, let's sing the peace song and the prayer for protection. And uh, go eat lunch and celebrate life. You want to come sing the peace song? The words, okay, here we go. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. I should have let Wally do that because you're.